Yo, thanks for tuning in again this week. Uh, this is Angel of Discord. We're checking out Orville Peck. And my buddy Dylan here has turned me on to this artist. My buddy Dylan is running his own Instagram, running uh, an account called Dylan Albans. Check it out. And here he is. He's going to talk a little bit about Orville Peck. Oh, man. I, uh, I, uh, I didn't realize I was going to be doing an intro. Uh, this is a, this is a, this is a great, uh, country artist. Uh, do you know anything about him? Nothing. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a gay cowboy. Fucking dope. Um, he wears this mask and I, I don't know the, uh, I don't know the cultural, like, community. I feel like it's a thing, but I, I don't know. He's also, I mean, he's has this great voice, like a great country voice. Like I kind of get like a little, like, I don't know, Garth Brooks with how low he can get with certain songs. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, and, but I think, uh, a lot of people maybe don't hear him because maybe, maybe they have a problem with him being gay, but he, yeah, that's too bad. Uh, but I really like it. And this is one that I, I feel like a lot of different interpretations could. I, I would be curious to think, hear what you have to, what you think the story in the, is. Okay, I can't wait. Let's do it. Yeah. By the way, space bar anytime. <laughs> Hiding now, running from the curse of the black and die. Uh -huh. Darling, I can feel it coming every time. Okay, I already have have a theory. Yeah. I think the singer um, represents maybe even God, but possibly. You could look into him as being a self-sacrificial figure, maybe even Jesus. And then across the corner, you've got this guy eating at the table. I think that guy might be the devil. That's the temptation. He is um, going to represent something that the singer is trying to avoid. The way you phrase the ending, it's very articulate. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't have, I don't have notes. I'm, I'm, I enjoyed that critique. Okay. Let's watch on. I sat around last year, wished so many times that I would die. Uh huh. Left it all and now I can see the night. So I think that I'm on to something, but I might not be right. I think maybe the death of somebody is following him around or something that's haunting him from the past is following him around. <laughs> yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> I might not be right. Let's see. Nothing to lose. Wouldn't miss it any. more about the things that you take with uh-huh i can feel it getting closer with every kiss you gotta be to join i'm trying to act You know what I'm thinking that you might be thinking with his uh, mask? He might be somewhat of a, uh, what's the Day of the Dead, I want to say, type of figure. I see a lot of the Day of the Dead kind of imagery happening. I, oh man, 
you know, I'm finding it hard to react to this video because it's like I'm 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 way more interested in seeing you experience <laughs> the story. Fair. Let's watch on. <laughs> Flip a coin cause I'm too bored to lie. It's true. really i think it's really interesting that like with the first guess that it's like something that he's avoiding that they they keep showing this imagery showing that there's this love for this thing that he's not addressing i to me that's that forbidden love with the thing that's going to kill him and that the devil is on his shoulder and that it's always tempting him to i don't know maybe end it all you know Something yeah. like that. Let's keep watching. I, uh, I, I mean, I, my hypothesis, because it's like I don't actually know what it is, but I think it like represents like the like a past relationship or like the darkness of like someone who hurt you. But do you think it's the darkness of himself that hurt her or him that actually is what's following him around? Is the darkness of what he did? The curse. The curse of the blackened eye also sounds like a black eye yeah it, like pain dom domestic pain mm -hmm. do you think that he's the one who left a black and die and that that's well, following him around the figure it, the figure is is dressed blackened like that is the curse mm -hmm. that he seems to keep following or keeps on following him maybe it's what he did yeah. <laughs> it's hard to know. Let's watch on. Nothing to lose. Wouldn't miss it anyhow. Always said I should work on my skin. an amazing vocal yeah it, I, I like the he's extremely talented and extremely emotional and expressive in his voice it, it it's like is it do you think he's bringing in like another style of vocals to a country song than uh is the normal country voice i would say he's bringing back actually a style that was like hank williams and he's oh. actually throwing me back i'm thinking wow, these vocals are very similar to Hank Williams. Although I think that what he just displayed was a little bit more impressive than f Hank Williams could even Im I hope for. But I think that vocally, yeah. he throws me back to old country. It, it's so dynamic. Like see, he, like hearing the, the scale and then like the, the, the wave, I don't know, singing. The vibrato. The, yeah, just in control it's like it was I, it, like a hill going up and coming down i i, I kind of want to go back and hear that part again we got to keep moving okay. forward sadly sadly only because that's too much video editing. <laughs> i know i'm a lazy fuck but that was beautiful just sing the song for heaven's sake Like I said, sound like Hank Williams, but it's so much more modern. It's so well produced. It's like literally like we're listening to the reincarnation of Hel Hank Williams in this day and age. It sounds so modern in the background. 
in his vocal production, but in his voice, I hear those old classics. I uh, I remember I went into a music store. I think it was, I don't know, the one near the fairgrounds. Um, and uh, they had really high quality pro- like studio headphones. Like, and they like, oh, plug in your phone and listen to a song. And I listened to an Orville Peck song. Uh, I think my favorite one, Kalahari Down. Um, and it's just hearing like the 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 development of the song on the like it it sounds great coming out of a phone, but it's like it, they somehow put it. It sounds like a voice in like a empty space, like a black box. Are you hearing that now? I am. Yeah, I'm hearing a bit of that here. Uh, These are what like, we're wearing right now, by the way. I don't want to give a shout out to anybody because nobody's paid me, but. Uh, what we are wearing is studio headphones that are made to be non-biased. So these are as non-biased as they get. In other words, other things will add bass or add treble to try to make the mix sound better. But in reality, what they do is they warp it and try to make it sound different than the original mix. So the challenge for studio musicians is how do you make a track that sounds good even through studio headphones that are non-biased and then when you put it in your car and it pumps up all the bass and it pumps up the treble, it also sounds good. And then the next thing is like, yeah. you know, you're putting on your fucking nice AirPods, but those things are fucking terrible in quality. Yeah. So how do you make it sound good through those and these and your car? Yeah. It's a challenge. And these sound great. These mixes sound really good. Yeah. This, these, I, I, I think that's probably why I started commenting on it because I can actually hear it on this yeah. song. Cause I, I just love his voice. Like his voice sounds amazing on these. Doesn't it? I know it sounds so good. And that's the organic. What we're basically hearing is YouTube may have changed some decibels, but what we're hearing is the most raw audio that is possible of that music. So we're hearing the studio version. Wow. So the version that is non-biased to any system. I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> True, it follows me around. Nothing to lose. Lost it all. certain now than ever that what he's saying is he has to hide who he is because of what he did and it's following him around everywhere he goes I I, I will react when we get to the to the end here okay let's do it Okay, so the ad blocked something really important. Yeah, I, I was just saying that like the they need to put like a little bit of buffer at the end if they're gonna promote other videos because the big thing that happens in that last like twenty seconds is he's followed by this curse. Then he meets this other cowboy and starts talking to him. And my idea of it being a representation of an old relationship heart hurt is when you meet somebody new that you kind of the the hurt kind of becomes lessened so he starts talking to someone cute and then looks over and the curse is gone and he's kind of looking around surprised and then it goes back to the person he was talking to to emphasize it's kind of because of this person and then they put two videos right over the other cowboy's face and it's like it, it loses because they're doing it twice because they're trying to tell you hey this moment is important look at it and it, it it just covers it up, and it kind of takes just a little bit away from the message. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's so true. And honestly, I don't know how many music videos that's a problem for, partly because I think they're all preparing for that because they're big studios. And this is probably a smaller studio, and they weren't prepared for that issue. It makes me think, like, you know, you've got, like, your Taylor Swifts and shit, where it's like their music videos always end where it's just zoomed in on for a face for a fucking 10 seconds at the very end. And that way they're ready for the commercial to roll. 
because they're prepared because they're big studio productions and they're already ready for what YouTube's going to do. Yeah. It's just, it's one of those just really small nitpicks that I have. It's a nitpick. Uh, because it's like, it doesn't really matter, but it, it, it annoys me. And this was the first time I've ever had a platform to complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> and it fu- fucks over, well, what I would think is it would fuck over people like this that are indie music performers that are making really cool music and really cool music videos. And basically, they they don't have the funding to have a guy who's sitting there that goes, oh, we're going to put this on YouTube. We have to have this at the end. We have to do this. You know, they're just not prepared for all this stuff. Um, I just, I want to make an analogy. Yeah. Uh, there's this episode of The Twilight Zone where oh, it's funny. the end of the world and this guy who just doesn't like people. With the glasses? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll cut forward. He breaks his glasses, and then they do a couple shots to emphasize, like, hey, the glasses are broken. Imagine you see it's it. It's right at the end. Yeah. yeah. Imagine you see the like a single shot for, like, three seconds, and you look at his face, and then, like, I don't know, they put two it videos right over. Before they actually show the fucking camera. And they're, like, yeah. showing the glasses yeah. here, but it's like, Before they show the like, <laughs> it's right at the end, too. You're yeah. right. It's right in the last it fucking seconds. It just doesn't linger long enough in the audience's mind to subconsciously be like, oh, shit, that thing broke. That's so true. Yeah, that's fucking crazy, bro. Huh. Really cool artist. Let's watch another one. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah, I, I have an idea between two. One is Kalahari Down, which is my favorite song. I li- according to Spotify, I listened to it 81 times last year. Let's so do it. we should probably do that one. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, Tune in soon, and we will be on that. Thank you.